Hello everybody. Today I'm going to teach you how to paint a peacock butterfly. This is the rough sketch you make just to see. I've decided to make two butterflies on the canvas. The canvas is big enough for two butterflies. So here you can see there is movement in the canvas. They have to go flying like this. This is the action in the garden. Well, this is the final drawing. Now you want to have it exactly like this on your canvas. What you need is transparent paper. You can trace your drawing as a mirror image and then you can transfer that mirror image on your canvas. So this is the light box. Behind the light, light box you can see a window, but I prefer to work on the light box. Here's your drawing. So what you do is turn it around. Take your tracing paper and you can start tracing your drawing. So now what you're doing is just get tracing the lines. So now you've traced the whole drawing on the tracing paper. Don't forget to mark the canvas. And you can take your drawing nicely against your canvas. You can see I've cut it the same size as the canvas. Voila! So now gonna transfer the drawing right on a canvas. It's like carbon paper. You can press it quite firmly because it's quite thick linen. So now you're transferring the drawing on the canvas and what you get is pencil drawing, a copy of your own pencil drawing on the canvas. As you can see, just take your time because I want to have nice, well visually black lines. Now you have done the whole drawing. It's time for the magic to reveal the drawing on the canvas. Voila! The next step is to secure your drawing with paint. I use burnt umber and a medium which speeds up the drawing because this is oil color. You can make the same draw painting in acrylics but I prefer oil color. It's nice and smooth. Just follow the lines and within no time you have the drawing. The first layer of paint and you will be able to see the drawing through, through two or three layers of paint. Just a tiny bit. So this was the first layer of paint 
and if you want to start with the background, which is the following step, make sure this one is dried out. Because in oil color you have to wait at least four hours, although it's, I've used the medium, the painting medium, which speeds up the drying process. You have to wait at least four hours. For the background I use white, brilliant blue and an ultramarine. The faster you work, the better are the results. So now I'm almost halfway, and then I start with more uh, ultramarine and more brilliant blue in it. So you get your depth in the depth. Mixing game. Just a little bit more ultramarine in it. Just mix it on the spot. So what you see is the first layer of paint, the brown lines are disappearing, but you will still be able to see them. That's it. And if you want, you can also paint at the same time the sides and the top of the canvas. So you have the right colors also, if you don't want to frame it. Well, that's a piece of art also. You could just hang it on a wall. So for the second layer, for the background, I used to paint a bit more with this, uh, the medium, so it uh, goes really, so it can work really quick. Because now there's already a lot of paint on the canvas, you can make your way even faster. Just work your way as fast as possible, then you have the nicest result. Put on some white to get back the shape of the butterflies. I always make it white again because if you want to use yellow or 
red or blue, the color is not the same because there is blue under it. See, the, the colors are not the same again. So now it's time to bring some color in your painting. These are the colors I start with. I have white, yellow ochre, cadmium red and crimson red, which is the reddest red you can get. And the jelly stuff to speed up the drying process. So, let's get started. I start with white and yellow ochre. I always work my way from light till dark. Instead of Rembrandt, he started with brown. Yellow ochre is one of the finest colors in your painting, but from some magical reason, it's very, it makes the colors, the other colors, very lively. So I suppose you can kind of compare it with sunshine in your painting. Because that's where painting is all about. It's catching the light in between the colors of paint. So don't forget to check your example. It's time to get some red in the painting. Cadmium red, I'll start with. The official color of the butterfly is a kind of rusty red. Crimson red. So the crimson red is mixing now with the cadmium red. So, so you can easily make a shade, kind of shade, darker red. Now I put on burnt umber. It's quite a dark brown. Just make short stripes because if you look very close to the butterfly, you see all the small, it looks like a feather. Small stripes. So now the right butterfly on, on top is uh, a bit more detailed. I've just added some more burnt umber and I've changed the shape of this part of the wings a bit and made it more symmetric. And I'll do the same with this butterfly. I'll just show you how much liquid jelly stuff I used is just 
about 30% or 20 or 30% of the paint itself. So it will dry within a few hours. So here now I'm going to change the shape of this part of the wing. So we're almost finished now. I just have to do the eyes, the body, a bit darker, and the antennas. For the eyes I use cadmium lemon yellow mixed with cadmium red you get orange for the pink crimson red and white for the blue I use cobalt blue with white and of course the jelly stuff For the kind of reddish brown for the body, I've mixed some burnt sienna and yellow ochre. More details in the body, more shade, and almost burnt umber, and burnt sienna. I'm bringing on more details and some extra cadmium red in the wings on some places. Second layer of orange. Some more 
burned umber to bring back the cubes of the eye. And don't forget the light dots. Touch of pink over the blue. 